Hi there. Today we're going to take a look at some of the programming basics that you're going to need to know if you want to program with Java. We'll take a look at first off what a program is, we'll talk about high level programming languages, we'll talk briefly about object oriented programming and then we'll take a look at the basic structure of a Java class including comments, class signature, the main method and printing text to the screen. So if we think firstly in terms of what a program is, a program is simply a set of simple instructions that we give the computer in order to carry out a task. Computers are only capable of taking an input from somebody, processing it and printing it back out again and that's exactly what we do with our programs. We tell it exactly what to do and when to do it to carry out a particular task. So it's about breaking things down step by step by step. High level programming languages such as Java are written or created in such a way that they make sense to people. So they're as close to the English language as we can get them. They sound, the commands sound like what it is they do. Compared to machine language, which would require a lot more planning and memory on our part. But unfortunately, computers only understand machine language. So the way that it works is we create a high level Java class using a high level programming language. And then we have to run it through a compiler, which turns it into machine code so that the computer can understand it. So there's a step there. Every time that we write a Java class, we're going to have to compile the program before we can run it. Object-oriented programming then is based on this principle of reusing code. So it's the one place you're encouraged not to reinvent the wheel. You're going to reuse anything that already exists. And that means that when we write our programs and we develop our classes, that we have to do it in such a way that we plan to reuse them. So we create everything in reusable blocks. The first block we take a look at is a Java class, which then can be reused over and over again. And the other thing we do then is within those classes, we look at breaking those down into reusable chunks. So everything is available to reuse and redeploy later as part of other applications. So what I'm going to do now is take a look at the basic structure of a Java class. Like I said, looking at comments, the class signature, the main method, and just printing some text to the screen using the command window. I'm going to develop my programs using TextPad. You can do them in any particular text editor. There are lots of applications out there for developing Java code. We're going to just use TextPad in these examples. All you need is for it to be set up with the correct Java SDK so that it compiles and runs the code correctly. So I'll switch over to TextPad now and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so to get started, we're going to use TextPad and it wouldn't do any harm for you to create a folder somewhere on your computer for Java programming, somewhere to save all of your files to keep them together. So this is what TextPad looks like. On your left, you have your document selector and in the main body then you can view your actual documents themselves. My recommendation is that you always, always, always save your class before you even start. If you do that, then TextPad will indent your code. It will change the color of parts of your code so you can see where there's a reserved word and where there's other words. So to do that, we'll go File and Save As. I'm going to go to my desktop to where I have my Intro to Programming folder. my Java programming folder and in here then I'm going to call this one my first program. Now you'll see I don't have any spaces in the name. I can't have any sort of symbols with the exception of maybe an underscore and there may be one or two others but it's best practice just to leave them out and when I don't have any spaces what I do is I capitalize every new word. So we get what we call camel case where then every new word is almost like a hump in the name. Okay, and then just for good practice, it will work regardless, but for good programming practice, you should name all of your Java classes with a capital letter. So I'm just going to make the text a little bigger so that it's easier to read. All right, and we mentioned that we start all of our Java programs with a comment. Now a comment, if we want it to run over a number of lines, is called a block level comment. You'll see initially this text turns green because I've started with a forward slash star and I've finished with a star forward slash. So everything I type in between here is going to turn green. And by doing that, I'm telling the compiler, which translates everything into machine code, to ignore this particular piece. This is a note to me, perhaps to the other developers I'm working with, where we're going to include the name of the program Okay, so the name of the class, myfirstprogram.java, the author, 
So we use at author, and that's me, Francis Sheridan, and the date on which it was written, which is the 9th of October 2013. Again, this tells the program, or tells the compiler to ignore this particular piece of code. It's a note for me. Often you might see the version number of a class or that sort of thing saved in this comment. To get started then, we have our class signature, which starts with public, class, and then the name of the class, which in this case is my first program. It's essential here that you make sure that whatever you're writing as your class name matches exactly what you had in the tab here when you saved your program. Okay, that's really important. Otherwise, the program won't run for you. Within that then, actually, and you'll see as well, I've opened a curly bracket here. Every time we open a curly bracket in Java, we should close a corresponding curly bracket. If you're inclined to forget to do that, make sure to just close it as soon as you've opened it and then you won't, you won't forget. If I come back up here then to the end of my class header, and I hit return, it's going to, TextPad is going to indent my code for me automatically, which is just another one of the benefits of saving earlier rather than later. If we waited to the end, it wouldn't indent anything for us and we'd be responsible for doing that ourselves. It just saves some of the time. So within each class, every application that you develop should have one main method. And the main method header is public, static, void, main, string, args, and watch out, string always gets a capital S. Again, I've opened a curly bracket, so I should make sure to close it somewhere. So I'll close it right away, and that way I won't forget later on. So again, if I click at the end of my main method header and hit return, Java will indent my cursor for me. It tabs it in, keeping my code nice and neat, making it easier later on for me to see where there might be problems. So your class, every class, needs to have a class header or a class signature and a close and curly bracket. At some point, depending on your application, you will have one main method, public, static, void, main, string, args. And again, all the parts of this will start to make sense as we go through later videos. And then within that, we give our commands or our simple instructions to the computer. So the simple instruction that we're going to use here is to print something to the screen. And the command to print something to the screen is system.out dot print. Then we open some brackets and some quotation marks and we say I love Java. And we close our bracket. And then very importantly at the end of our line of code we have a semicolon. So after every command we use a semicolon. Now it's not a hard and fast rule but the way that I tend to remember it is that every line of code is either going to have an opening curly bracket like these ones or it's going to have a semicolon. You won't ever have both. Okay, so we don't need semicolons on the first two because we have open and curly brackets. We do need a semicolon here because we're not opening a curly bracket. That's probably the easiest way to remember it for now. When it comes time to, we finish our program and we want to compile it and check if it runs, we go tools, external tools, compile Java. And we get down here in our tool output, tool completed successfully. So then we say tools, external tools, run Java application, and we get I love Java. And then we get this press any key to continue. Now ideally we'd like press any key to continue to come on the next line so that we can read the line of code we've just printed. And the way that we do that is we go back to our print statement and we s insert LN. Now it looks a little bit like an uppercase I, so don't get confused. It's LN for line. And what we're telling Java there is to print I love Java and then go to a new line. So when we compile now, tools, external tools, compile, and every time we make a change, we must recompile the code. Tools, external tools, run Java application. We get I love Java. The cursor moves to a new line, and then it prints press any key to continue. And that's the very, very basics, just printing a string to the screen. So we could go a step further then, and we could add another command to print to the screen, system.out dot print ln I love programming and then we close our brackets and our semicolon again because every instruction ends with a semicolon tools external tools compile with this particular setup in textpad I don't need to save my changes because compiling them saves them automatically but just be careful that that's how you've got your setup 
tools, external tools, run Java application, and I get I love Java, I love programming. So that's the basic structure. You need to remember to start, for good practice, to start everything with a comment. The code would work without it, but just for good practice, best get into the habits now. Then we have our class signature, where we have the name of our class, and we have our reserved Java words, the ones that turn blue, public and class. Within that, then, we open our main method. This is something you should probably just set about knowing off by heart for now, and it'll come to make a lot more sense as time goes on. Our command to print to the screen is system.out.print or system.out.println. When you want to print text, you need to have your quotation marks, so watch out that you've opened and closed those correctly. And make sure that all of your brackets are closed. In order to check that your brackets are closed, you can highlight one of the brackets and then press Ctrl and M on the keyboard. And that will take you to where your other bracket is. So if we've highlighted this one and press Ctrl and M, it should bring us here. If it doesn't, it means that we haven't closed the brackets. And that's your basics of one very simple program just designed to print to the screen. And we're going to take a look now in a moment at another example where we might start dealing with numbers.